Thank you, Dean, and good evening all. Uh, my beautiful wife, Lucinda, and I are extremely excited to be here at our first Doig Medal presentation dinner. We're even more excited to now feel a bit like a proper part of the very special family that is the Fremantle Football Club. While our introduction to Fremantle has been a little more disjointed than it would have been otherwise this year, the upside to the challenges that have arisen is that we have highlighted some of the remarkable tra traits that our club has. At JL's first press conference as senior coach, he spoke of the passion of the fans as a defining feature of the club, that it drove him and the team when he was a player, and it still drives our players today. He said that he thinks we have the most passionate and committed fan base in the competition, and that he couldn't wait to, with their support, evolve our brand of footy and give them something to cheer about. A cynical view could have been that it might have been a relatively predictable thing for a new coach to say upon being appointed. However, I distinctly remember at the time that it struck me as an unfiltered and honest comment from someone who genuinely felt that way. I've since got to know JL a little bit better. I actually didn't know him at that time. And, and those of you who know him well understand that he isn't one to say things that he doesn't mean. And while we wouldn't have wished 2020 upon anyone, it has provided a number of clear examples that underline and reaffirm exactly what JL said that day. The reality of COVID-19's impact on the world Oh, excuse me for a moment. Just lost my spot slightly. As you might have told, told. The reality of the COVID's impact on the world was starting to hit, and we immediately had a focus on operating in an uncertain and potentially dangerous environment. One of the most significant impacts to our season was the AFLW girls being impacted immediately upon the realisation that the world had changed. Dale stepped through the devastating chain of events that led to the cancellation of the AFLW season. However, I again wanted to thank Trent, Cara, and everyone involved in our AFLW program. Thank you for the way you inspired us, made us proud, and also for the way you held yourself during such a difficult time. There's clearly unfinished business, as Dale said, and we can't wait to watch it unfold in 2021. While it was devastating for our girls and our club, it soon became clear that the challenges were just beginning. As the impact of the AFL season started to materialise, it felt like our club had hit a submerged iceberg and was beginning to take on water at an alarming rate. At this point, there was a genuine possibility that a season may not go ahead at all, and we therefore had to assume that all of our key revenue drivers were going to be materially impacted. In response, we had to remove costs from the business and had to make the most challenging of decisions that impacted the most committed and devoted Fremantle people. It's here, folks, that we begin to see what our people are made of, and how special some places are. After a stroke of genius, mixed with a ridiculous amount of generosity, the Forever Project concept was born with a Dale Alcock house and land package as the centrepiece. Dale and Jan, on behalf of everyone in the room, the entire Frio family and the Purple Army, thank you for your generosity and inspiration at a time of need the likes of which our club has rarely seen. Immediately post Dale and Jan's gesture, our people from all areas of the club collaborated in a way that allowed us to build the Forever campaign from concept to implementation in just on three weeks. The response to this piece of work from what JL so aptly described as the most committed and loyal fan base in the competition produced the following results. Bear with me for a moment. 65% of eligible members committed their entire 2020 membership fee to the club. An additional 17% committed 50% of their membership fee for the year. So 82% committed 50% or more of their membership fee to the club. Another 15% committed to a Purple Army or Forever Hero membership contribution, meaning 97% of our eligible members did what they could. 3% needed to cancel and gain a refund, which we both completely understood and facilitated immediately. But again, we were blown away by how low that number was. The support and commitment of our members meant that we retained 74% or $11.4 million of our pre-COVID membership revenue figure, which on any measure was an outstanding result. That result was made even more remarkable when, when considering it was done at a time when no games being played was a very real possibility. Again, to every Freo Dockers member, thank you for doing what you could to support the club that you call yours.
When the season was postponed after round one, our players had to maintain their condition and professionalism during what was another mini off season. After steadying the ship financially during the initial response phase, the small, first small sign of a recovery from my perspective came on May 18, when the boys returned to the club to prepare for the season restart. Along with the players, the core of our football staff also returning, meaning a piece of our heart and soul began to click back into place. On June 13, we hit Hub 1 to restart the season and immediately became an environment of elite application and professionalism from our players and staff. No complaints, no woe is me or why us, just a committed group of people wanting to improve and drive each other towards the sustained success that they have identified as their overriding aim. The on-field results, in a sense, were secondary as the guys took the opportunity to build levels of connection and engagement that will provide a launching pad for years to come. As we looked to return to Perth, we had to prepare for the home RAC Derby. This was the point where another major piece of our identity and heart and soul returned with a number of our key administrating staff rejoining the business in early July. We proceeded to punch out seven home games in succession at an Optus Stadium with 50% capacity, which made it harder rather than easier. Both club, staff and supporters success successfully navigated the introduction of digital ticketing. Each week we would re-ticket the stadium for those who had pledged and we would re-market it to anyone who would buy a ticket. It was another monumental effort that provided a hugely positive outcome while underlining what this place is made of. Then, our players and staff packed up and farewelled their loved ones again for hub number two, forever defining 2020 as a year we went and lived in Queensland for nine weeks. With that in mind, I'd like to acknowledge the partners, family members of players, coaches and staff who went to a hub during the year. On a night of recognition and celebration, we want to recognise you and the sacrifices you all made during this year. You played such an important role and I want to thank you all for your unwavering support. In addition to the support you provided your loved ones and in turn the club, you also formed a strong and significant support group for each other, just as occurred in Queensland, setting a foundation of connection, support and camaraderie that will be a massive benefit in years to come. You all gave up so much to the so that the club could endure and for that we are incredibly grateful. Thank you. I want to take this opportunity to thank Peter Bell, Justin Longmuir, Joe Bridey, Nat Fife, all the players, coaches and football staff for their commitment, sacrifice and output this year. Not only did you approach it with professionalism and class, but you grew remarkably as a collective unit and have built connection, relationships and a foundation that provides our club a significant opportunity. A huge thank you to my executive team, Graham Parker, Cam Tui, Luke Morfess, Casey Ball, Evelina Palmiotti, Peter Bell and Joe Bridey. I came into this role 12 months ago not knowing any of you, and I finished the 2020 campaign fortunate enough to work with a, a group of trusted confidants, incredible practitioners and professionals, and genuine friends. To the leadership team and the entire Fremantle staff group, it's been a ridiculous year on a number of fronts, but as we discussed last Friday, we have emerged in a far stronger position than envisaged because of your efforts and commitment, and we are now ready to thrive. I know none of the staff group and football department are in the least bit content, and as an organisation we are, we are ready to move beyond any element of recovery phase into a mode of thriving and competing to win. To our departing staff and players, thank you for the contribution and impact you've had on this football club. Peter will address some of our iconic contributors in more detail later, but thank you all for a legacy left in some way, shape or form. To our President Dale, Vice President Craig and our entire board of directors, you're a highly skilled, supportive and dedicated group of people who are in the roles you're in for the right reasons. With your guidance and support, we have a significant opportunity to drive towards sustained success and thank you for your huge contribution to that end. And to the Purple Army, we've never taken you for granted, but for a number of weeks this year, our players unfortunately had to experience games without you in the stands. The game's clearly not the same without you and this period was a reminder that the energy we draw from the cheers from the chance and the familiar faces is irreplaceable. And to you all in the room this evening, while tonight is a celebration of the incredible work, commitment and achievements that this year produced, it also provides a full stop on season 2020. No one predicted it, no one would have wished it upon us, but good people and great organisations deal with what they are confronted with and move forward. 2020 has shown us what we are made of and more importantly, it's given us a glimpse of what, into what we can become. 
I was inspired and honoured to have been part of the Fremantle Football Club that not only dealt with the cards it was handed this year, but treated every obstacle as an op opportunity to improve and to get us to where we want to be. That to me is as clear as indication as any that we're heading in the right direction. We're nowhere near where we want to be, we feel no level of contentment, but we take so much from a year that so many others want to forget as we move forward together towards sustainable and consistent success. Thank you and enjoy the evening.